It's a new year and you know what that means. Park Bag Essentials. We are here hanging out at Animal Kingdom today to show you all of our favorite things that we like to take in our park bag for 2024. And don't worry, it's not just Animal Kingdom specific stuff. It's gonna cover winter, hot weather, rainy weather, and everything in between. Let's talk about some of the things that I find most helpful to have in your park bag when you are dining at Disney World. They're usually gonna have everything that you need from straws and utensils and things. However, we like to bring our own reusable utensils and reusable straws. Reason being, I can't tell you how many times we've gone, gotten our food, we sat down, and we were like, oh no, we forgot silverware. And the thing's like way far away. <laughs> and we don't wanna get up and go get some. So we like bringing our own reusable reusable utensils to use with our food. You can get all kinds of different reusable utensils. Mark Allen likes to use these metal ones. I have these plastic ones. I like that they fold up into each other, just nice and small and easy to put in your bag. The metal one, if you are traveling by plane, could get a little iffy with TSA. So we do have these plastic ones linked. They do still have a knife, but it's plastic. So you're gonna have an easier time getting through TSA with these and they work just as well. Reusable straws are also a big one at Disney. Pretty much all straws that you're gonna find on property are going to be either paper straws. You might get lucky and find those like kind of plasticky-esque like agave straws. 99% of the time, they're going to be the paper straws. And I don't know about you, but I hate those. I think they're awful. I'm all for saving the planet, but this still also saves the planet. We like to bring our own reusable straw. So this one, we actually picked these up at the Coca-Cola store, but they have tons of them on Amazon. I like this one that it's collapsible and mine comes in like a nice little case. They're just really easy to pack. You just can go clean it in the bathroom or whatever you need to do and these are great. When it comes to eating, you never want to come to Disney World without wet wipes. These are also the sanitizing kind so they also kill germs. Let's say you get something sticky all over your hands or you need to wipe up a mess or let's say clean off a festival table at Epcot. These are just great for a really quick and easy cleanup. Let's talk about the most important part, the bag itself. So there's a million different options that you can do when choosing your park bag, but there are some things that are going to make or break your day depending on what you do. My personal favorite is either some type of small fanny pack or small crossbody. Pretty much the smaller the better. The biggest key to choosing your park bag is you need it big enough that it can fit everything that you need but pretty much as small as you can make it. The less that you can be carrying throughout the parks especially on hot days your back will thank you. <laughs> Keep in mind you're going to be carrying these bags for several days even if you need to have a few different bags to kind of change up like where it sits on your shoulder that can always be a good idea. We don't have kids so we don't really need a whole time when we come to the parks so something small like a fanny pack works great for us but let's say you do have kids or you have a bigger group and you do need a little bit larger bag again try and keep that bag as small as you can but definitely keep it big enough that you can fit everything in it something else that I really look for when I am looking at a bag is the organization of it how many pockets does it have this particular fanny pack I have really been loving lately I love how many pockets you've got kind of like a smaller one and then you've got like a really really small one this is great for things like band-aids or just super small items then you've got your main pouch and inside there's a zipper pouch there and on the back there's another zipper pouch for more important things like gift cards, money, receipts, things like that. I can keep everything organized and fit everything. Everything that we're talking about today is in this tiny bag. So it fits a lot, but it's not super big, which is great. It's time to talk medical supplies. All of the parks do have a first aid center. Let's say you don't have a specific item that you may need, just go to the first aid center. I'm sure they'll probably have what you're looking for. Our first thing that we almost always have with us in case we get a headache or something is hurting is one of these little medicine holders. Again, like Kayla said earlier, is that we don't have the full bottle. This is just like a little like silicone thing. And then we just have a little variety of like Excedrin, Tylenol, 
ibuprofen, allergy medicine, things like that. And we just refill this at the end of each day. Let's say you're coming here on your vacation, make sure you just put that full bottle within your suitcase and then just refill this as needed. Chapstick is also, believe it or not, very important. Even though it's not very dry here, the sun, you'll basically get like sunburn on your lips and believe us from personal experience, you will want chapstick. This is just one that we have. It also has SPF in it. When you are picking out your chapstick, that it does have some sort of SPF in it. Lens wipes are something that not a lot of people talk about in their park bag, but let's say you are a glasses wearer or even if you have sunglasses like us, it rains or you ride a water ride and you just need to clean some spots off. These are like pre-moisten lens wipes just in case you get a smudge and you're like me and you get very annoyed with smudges on your glasses. We're going to talk more about weather specific items, whether it's hot or not, but a water bottle is something that you almost always want to have with you on your Walt Disney World vacation. Reality is that you're walking about 10 miles a day and hydration can really make or break your trip. Let's say you get lightheaded and you have to sit out the rest of the day because you got heat stroke prevent that from happening and carry a water bottle. Have we mentioned that it gets very hot in Orlando? And some of our biggest things that we always have is the liquid IV, especially in the summertime or when it's hot. It's essentially an electrolyte that you put in your water, but they have lots of different flavors. Our personal favorite is the pina colada because it's not super sweet. Also, if you're someone that is prone to headaches, this stuff is phenomenal. If I feel a headache coming on, it's more than likely because I'm starting to get dehydrated and I haven't drank enough water. Drink one of these, it will pretty much make your headache go away. We really like these waterproof Next Care Band-Aids. It's hot, it's humid, you will sweat. These do the best about staying on. Most of the other Band-Aids, because you are sweating so much, just tend to fall right off. But you also wanna have like a blister Band-Aid because let's say you get a rub spot somewhere. These are just really, really nice if you do end up getting a blister. If you do have kiddos or kiddos at heart, you are definitely gonna wanna make sure you have an autograph book and a Pin. There are characters all over all of the parks and you can get autographs from them. Now they do sell these like really cute autograph books in the gift shops, but don't forget that you can also pick some up on Amazon for a lot cheaper. However, what I do love is they sell these nice big pins in the gift shop. These are a lot easier for the characters to hold, especially like Mickey Mouse. Definitely consider maybe a bigger Sharpie or one of these fun pens. The number one thing you will never catch me in the parks without is my fuel rod. A fuel rod is a portable charging device to help charge your phones or your cameras or whatever types of batteries that you may have. Of course, you can always have any kind of battery bank situation, but what I like about fuel rods is that they have kiosks all around the parks that you can swap for freshly charged fuel rods. You do have to purchase your first fuel rod kit, which comes in like this little case. It comes with your fuel rod and then it comes with cords, not this cord. Mine broke a long time ago, so I had to buy a new one, but you'll have a few different cords that come with it. Then what you do is use it to charge your phone. When it is dead, you will look for one of those charging stations around the park. You'll go swap it and then that's it. You do get free swaps at any of the Disney parks or Disney resorts. Any of those kiosks, the swaps are free. Your first fuel rod kit is going to be $30. $30 if you purchase in the park, or you can use my Amazon link in the description box below to get two for pretty much the price of one. There is an item that used to be really important to have in your park bag, but you don't need any more. Press pennies. So the, all the press penny machines have been updated in the past several years to where now you basically can just use your credit card. You don't need to have your actual pennies to put in the machines. It gives you the pennies or the copper blanks. I'm a little sad it takes some of the fun out of it, but there are some that you'll still find that'll have the cranks, but a lot of them have updated to this new press penny system. Bringing back Mark Allen's water bottle, something else that I like to have in our park bag at all times is a carabiner. These can come in handy for all kinds of different things. Of course, if you wanna attach your water bottle to your bag or your pants if you have belt loops, or even if you just have like souvenirs in a shopping bag that you wanna attach to your bag that maybe don't fit inside of your park bag. These are a really handy tool. They're very, very cheap to get like a little pack of them and they come in handy for a lot of different things. Let's talk trading pins. Trading pins are something that you may want to consider carrying, but obviously it's not a necessity like 
some of the other items we've already talked about. Whether you want to carry them in a little bag like this or maybe even a pinion lanyard, that's something you do want to consider before your vacation. That way you can purchase these because they're going to be a little bit cheaper ahead of time. But make sure you subscribe because we are going to be filming a trading pin kind of 101 video very soon. So be on the lookout for that. Our loop earplugs are something we almost never leave the house without. Even if we're not going to the parks, we pretty much always have these with us. These are the loop switch. So you can kind of decide how much like noise cancellation you want, but it's nice. They just fit in your ear like this. And nice and quiet if you just want to be like kind of away from people in your head space. These are great. Also, if you use our link in the description box below, you can get 15% off. Let's talk about the weather. It is Florida. It's hot. It rains. And believe it or not, this time of year, it does also get cold. So it's good to be prepared for all different types of weather because Florida does have seasons. First things first, most times of the year, Florida is going to be very, very hot, very, very muggy. But with the summer, that also comes lots and lots of rain. So it is incredibly important to have your rain gear, whether that is an umbrella, a rain jacket, or even a poncho that you can easily throw in your bag. Personally, our favorites are umbrellas because they actually have a double purpose, especially if you get an umbrella that is a solar umbrella. Not only will it help with the rain, but it can also help with the sun. Let's say you are waiting for the afternoon parade at Magic Kingdom and the sun is beating down on you and it's a thousand degrees outside. These can be a nice little relief for some shade out of that sunshine. Some other things that can help with the sun are going to be even having like a hat that you can throw into your bag or even just wear for the day and sunglasses. My personal favorites are Gooders. Mark Allen also wears these. Again, we're not sponsored by any of these products. These are just all of our favorites that we like to use and we will have links for everything in the description box below. Other helpful thing that is definitely a must to protect you from the sun is sunscreen. We don't have our full bottle with us today, but we do have our nice little face stick. We really like sun bum. We like the way it smells. It's not quite as chemically as some other sunscreens, but this is super great to throw in your bag because once you know you sweat and all the sunscreen comes off, it's really easy to reapply. We are closer to the equator, so the sun can get very, very harsh and it is very easy to burn. Even if you're somebody who does already spend a lot of time outside, trust me, nothing ruins a vacation faster than a bad sunburn. So pack that sunscreen. Speaking of hot and sweaty, now it's time to talk about the uh, not super fun kind of TMI part of going to Disney and that's chafing. It happens to all of us, even those of us that Normally in any other time of our lives, you may not chafe. It will probably happen at Disney because you're walking so much. The humidity is very strong. There's a lot of moisture, a lot of friction. That's recipe for blisters and chafing. I have tried so many products, like everything under the sun. And truly the best thing that I have found that works without fail every time is Monistat Chafing Anti-Chafe Gel. This is a gel powder, so it comes out in like a gel and then it dries to almost like a powder type substance. It's very silky. It doesn't feel like gross, greasy, sticky, tacky, kind of like Body Glide does. I'm a texture person and this actually has a pretty good texture and it works. It helps prevent chafing, but then also when the chafing does happen, it does help to soothe so that it doesn't get worse. Along with the chafing stuff, I also use a product. I don't actually carry it in our bag. I put it on beforehand. The brand is Ballsy. It's called Ball Guard Liquid Powder. All that you put two and two together. TMI, I know, but it works. Currently at the time of filming this, it is kind of late January and a lot of times in January it can drop down into like the 40s, 50s, although ironically it's 85 degrees today. Florida man. Layers are our biggest tip when it comes to surviving the colder weather because it will a lot of times be 30, 40, 50 degrees in the morning and then that sun comes out in the afternoon and it's like 80 degrees. Layers are the biggest thing. Remember how you said that umbrellas have multifunction? Yeah. It also protects you from bird poop. That's a good point. 
anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed learning about all the things that we like to take to the parks. Those are the tried and true things that we have found to be the most helpful during our days at Disney. If you found these tips helpful, like this video and subscribe for more tips. And remember too, we don't have kids, so I know that your park bag is probably going to vary a little bit from ours. So if there are things that you like to bring in your park bag, let us know in the comments so that we can kind of create an ultimate list. But if you do want a printable park bag checklist, make sure you check out the description. Cause like I said, we do have links for all the products in this video, but I also have a free printable checklist to help you out for your next Disney vacation. We hope you guys enjoyed. That's all we have for you today. Now, now go, go create, create your, your ever after. That's really good. <laughs> I will be honest, we forgot to clean this before this video today, and there was some questionable material, so I'm not actually gonna use this today. So let's head on over to wherever we wanna, um, let's get into it. How about that? Do I need to dab my forehead? Are you actually recording this time? Um, oh no, your hand looks like a ghost. Remember how Kayla said that the umbrella sold, sir, do you remember how the, what? <laughs> Hang, on. Hang on, let me say that one. Oh my gosh, okay. And that's all we have for you guys today. No, there's one more thing yeah. I wanted to say.